The Horizon theme, quite honestly, is the best theme which you can choose for your Shopify store. It's simple yet unique and actually also is highly customizable, unlike all of the other themes. So in today's video, I will actually walk you through step by step on how to set up the Horizon theme for your store, how to customize it and so on. However, right at the start, I do want to actually explain something which a lot of people don't understand. Now, as you can see on screen right here, there are basically a lot of Horizon related themes out there. In today's video, we are going to customize the default Horizon theme, but please understand that all of these themes right here are basically just skinned versions of the Horizon theme, meaning that they are basically on the same structure and with some customization, you could receive the same exact results on your own. So you aren't really going to be limited when choosing any other theme than the Horizon theme, rather you can just view this as kind of a sub starting point. So I've just now created this completely blank Shopify store. I've only added a couple of products on here and I've added two collections for us to use. If you don't already have a Shopify store, make sure to use the link down below to get yourself an extended free trial. So we're now heading over to online store. As you can see, by default, we right now still have the Dawn theme, but I've already installed the Horizon theme right here, which we are going to customize. You can view all of the horizon variations right here or by visiting the theme store. So let's now actually open up the actual theme editor. Now, this is basically just a section-based editor. Whenever we are going to select certain sections, we are going to view all of the settings on the right. On the left, we can then see a general overview of how our site is structured. We can select certain sections and the blocks inside these sections to then also view the settings on the right. Now, first off, before we are going to dive into the actual homepage, let's get started by adding a logo, by actually changing the font and so on. To do that, head over to the theme settings right here. These kind of work as the general guidelines for your store. So right here, you can set your logo. Let's quickly do that. I'm going to use this black logo right here. And we can then actually also use the inverse logo. This is actually being used whenever you're going to have a transparent header. And as you can see right here, uh, when the transparent header is active, then you're going to have the reverse uh, logo, which in our case is going to be white. Perfect. Now, right now this does look pretty bad, but we're going to customize this in just a second. As for the colors, right here we can then change the color scheme. I would always recommend you to actually use a tool like Coolers.co. You can see that right here. I'm not affiliated with them, but you can actually use this to generate color palettes for your store. And this overall just helps you actually create a tailored experience and to basically feel, basically your store feels more customized when adding custom colors based on your own products. I think in our case, I'm just going to leave it at the default, but maybe we're going to change this later on. We can then also change the font inside right here. But I really like the interfont. However, changing the font is one of the biggest leverage points which you can use to change the overall aesthetic of your store. So make sure to actually play around with this. So let's now head back to the sections and let's actually get started with this from top to bottom. So on the top, we do have our header right here. This is basically going to display the certain kind of menu points. And right here, one thing which I can see right away, we've actually set the wrong inverse logo but more than just a second so when we are going to select the header right here on the right we can then set the logo position we can set the menu position so this menu would be the actual uh, kind of items so the actual sites which you're going to link in my case i'm just going to leave this at the left i think the menu there is really nice now as for the actual menu points let's also customize this so for for that make sure to just simply open up this exit point in a new tab this is going to redirect you back onto the actual dashboard and then head over to content, navigate to menus, and right here under the main menu, you can then change all of the menu items. I'm going to leave, basically I'm going to delete the catalog and the contact option. I'm rather going to add a shop all label, and we are then going to connect this to the products tab and to the all products tab. If you, for example, have a special discount or if you have a one product Shopify store, you can always just simply select a certain product and display that inside the header menu. In my case, I like to make this as minimalistic as possible, but you can then actually also create sub menus by simply just sliding this on the right right here. But I'm just going to delete the second menu item and I'm just going to go ahead uh, with the home menu tab and with the shop all menu tab. This is now going to take a couple of seconds to update. As for the search icon, um, basically make sure to unselect this if you only have very few 
products available. However, if you have multiple products and if you have 20, 30, maybe 100 products, you can actually leave this enabled. Otherwise, this is going to hurt your conversion. As for the localization, you can basically enable that right here. You can enable the language, selector and so on. And we can also change the overall appearance. So right here, we can change the height. We can change the sticky header. So right here, we right now do have a sticky header, which you can see where this is basically sticked to the top. But we can also change this to only on scroll up so that whenever we are going to scroll down, this actual header is only going to appear when we are going to slightly grow, scroll up essentially. But I'm going to leave this on always. As for the colors, we can then change the color scheme to two, for example. And uh, let's actually change this to six, just to show you this. And as you can see, this would now actually change this based on the actual color schemes, which we can actually set inside the color, inside the theme settings right here. But I'm going to basically change this back to color scheme one. As for the home page, um, we can right here also unselect to have a transparent background, but I actually really like this. So I'm going to leave this on. We can also do the same for the product page and for the collection page. So let's now continue with quite arguably the most important part of your homepage, the hero section, which you can see right here. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this hero section. Let's rather click on add section. And as you can see right here, we are then going to have quite a lot of basically pre-made sections, which we can use for our store. Now, as for under the banners, we can view some of the hero sections which we can use. Like this hero, this hero Marquis, this large logo, Mar Marquis, I don't know how to pronounce this, split showcase and so on. So these are going to be, basically these were great for first sections which are going to display your product in use, uh, a tagline and so on. So I'm just going to select this default hero section just to show you this. This is how it would actually look like by default if you would add this. You can then select an image. So I'm just going to go with this example image right here and we can then actually when clicking on here we can actually also change the focal point so i'm going to actually lock this onto this person right here so that this is basically in the middle and we're now heading back and he now is a bit more centered. So we can then go ahead and also add a second media, which would then actually rotate. We can actually also add videos onto this hero section, which actually is quite an update from beforehand. And we can also change the overall layout. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the alignment to left. And I'm then going to position this as the on the bottom, basically, right here. What I also don't really like is that there is quite a big, a big gap between the heading, between the subheading and the button. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this, basically I'm going to make this a little bit less. Uh, as for the width, we can then also change this to full, but I'm going to leave this as page. And as for the height, we can then actually also change this around. And this is basically going to change the overall layout of this. But in my case, I'm going to actually change, basically I'm going to leave this at large because I think this basically fits the overall aesthetic best. Now, one thing which you can always do and which I would highly recommend you to do is to actually check how your store is going to look like on mobile. You can do this by basically changing the breakpoint of your store right here, as you can see on the top right. So this would be the desktop view and this would then be the uh, basically the mobile view. And I think this actually looks really good on mobile. And nowadays, most people actually do uh, visit your store on mobile. So this is quite arguably the most important part of setting up your store. In this case, right here we still have quite a big gap because we have a quite big text box right here so to actually change this we will have to select this block right here so this is already selected and then under padding we can basically change the spacing of this block in this case because on the bottom there is 32 by default this is going to have this quite big space but we can change this to zero and now this is going to be uh, a little bit more yeah this is going to have no spacing but i'm going to change this to something like eight and i'm also going to add a top padding to eight as well. So now this does look a little bit better if you ask me. All right, so let's now actually head back to the desktop view. We can then actually go ahead and also change the overall appearance of this. We can change the color scheme. So if for example, the text right here isn't really readable, then you could actually change this. Let's actually see how this would look like. Yeah, black doesn't really look nice. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to go with scheme five, but you can obviously also change this. Now, I'm then also going to select the button. And as you can see, this is going to have this kind of animation to it. We can then change the button label. We can also change the link. So basically where this is going to redirect them to. We can change the style to secondary, for example. And now this is going to have kind of a glassy effect, which I actually really like. I'm going to actually go ahead and leave this in. We can then actually also change, um, we can change the size, we can change the mobile width and 
and so on. But for now, it's, let's actually leave this hero. I think this actually does look really good. If you would want to change the text, obviously just select the block and then change the text right here. But this is really straightforward, so I don't want to actually bore you with this. Always make sure to save this right here so that you aren't going to get into any trouble. And let's now actually continue with the next part. Now, by default, we are going to have a product list, a grid right here. But I'm actually going to delete this because I don't really like this inside my store. I think this only works if you have very few products available. However, if you have multiple products like me right here, this doesn't really look that stylish and I just tend to actually delete this and I'm not going to use this. Perfect. Let's now add another section. And what I actually would like to do is I would like to actually have a kind of a splitting option where people can choose between tops or between accessories, which we said. So to do that, I'm going to add another section. I'm going to actually use this split showcase section to achieve this. And we can then actually select the tab on the left. We can change, we can select an image. So I'm just going to, yeah, let's just go with this image right here. And then I'm going to change the heading from this to tops. And I'm going to repeat this process with this one on the right. And I'm going to use this belt as an example, or let's use this head for example, I think this fits better. And then I'm going to actually rename this as well to yeah, accessories. We will then have to actually make these two uh, images clickable. And what I also don't really like is that this kind of right here actually uh, cuts this person off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the image position to fit right here. And right now this, okay, this doesn't really look good. So let's maybe actually select cover. Let's click on edit image. And let's once again actually set the focal point. I think something like this could actually work. We obviously still want to have our t-shirt visible, but I think this actually works really good. And we can then actually select each of these basically groups right here. So these would be different kind of groups inside our sections, as you can see right here. So for the left group, I'm then going to actually make this linkable. So I'm going to link this to products and no, not, not to products actually. I'm going to link this to collections and then to the tops collection, which I've set up beforehand. And I'm then going to repeat this process with this one and I'm going to actually link this onto the accessories collection. And we're now saving this. Let's actually also preview this on mobile. This is how it is going to look like. And let's actually say, for example, we are going to click on shop now. This is then going to redirect us onto the actual uh, correct color. Okay, so this is going to redirect us onto the all collections tab, which we actually don't want. So let's actually look into this. So we will have to also change the shop now button and let's change this to the correct collection as well. Because beforehand we only made the actual image clickable, but we haven't actually made the text right here uh, clickable or we haven't changed this. So I'm going to select the collections tab and I'm going to actually select uh, And I'm going to select accessories right here as well. And now we can, first of all, we can basically just click on here and we can then actually also click on shop now. And this is then going to redirect us onto the correct collection. Perfect. Let's now head back to our homepage and let's actually just for the gist of it, let's actually add another section. Right now, right here, as you can see, you have a lot of pre-made sections, which you can all use. However, what you can also do is you can basically cu build custom sections on your own. To do that, click on add section and then I'm going going to simply select custom section right here and we can then first of all simply just add any of these blocks we can add a button a heading an icon image so if we would for example add an image right here onto our custom section this is going to look like this we can then for example say okay the aspect ratio should be a square we can then actually change this to fit the desktop width to fit the mobile width and then we do have an image right here okay so this doesn't really look that good so let's actually say fill and now this is going to fill it. But either way, this is how you could actually manually build up your own, core, basically your own sections. However, recently they've also added a lot of new AI features and you can now basically create unique blocks for whatever you want inside Shopify. So in my case, I'm just going to click on generate and I'm going to say something like generate me a section where the customers can view the top selling products of our store and see compelling info for the clothing. So this is a really bad prompt actually. I just want to actually showcase, showcase this, but let's see what is this, what this is going to come up with. This usually takes a couple of seconds. And as you can see, this is now basically going to automatically generate the code for the section. 
So this is what it actually came up with by default, so this doesn't really look good. So we will have to add some follow-up instructions. So I'm just going to add, add the images of the products. Also change the color to fit the overall store design. And yeah, make the buttons more round. And this is what it actually came up with. So overall, I, I actually really like this. Let's see what it looks like on mobile. So I think this does look even better. Let's see if they've also automatically linked the products. Yeah, perfect. So it automatically now actually redirected me onto the correct product. So overall, I just really like this feature and I did want to show it to you because beforehand, before this update, you couldn't really fully customize your Shopify store as you were fully limited to the default sections right here or to basically hard coding something on your own. But now with this new AI feature, you can really build up whatever you want. And as you can see, my prompts were really bad, but but I still managed to create a pretty good custom section right here, if you ask me, in just two prompts. So this is really beginner friendly and you don't have to be an expert to actually use this. So we're now actually going for the footer. I personally like to actually keep this as simple as possible. You do have your text right here on the left, join the club, get exclusive deals and early access to new products. And then they can basically put in their email address. By the way, if you would want to change the style of um, this section right here, for example, you could also do that in the theme settings by changing the buttons right here, by changing the pills, by changing the corner radios and so on. But I'm not going to get into that right now. As for the footer, you will also have to add a links section right here so this is actually required and then as for a uh, click on the menu change the menu to re basically replace it and select the footer menu and then later on when you're going to you basically when you're going to add all of the legal pages and um, this is then going to show up right here which is mandatory by law so make sure to add this Otherwise, I think I'm going to leave the footer as it is for now. So let's now actually save this and let's also head over to our product page. So I'm just going to preview this on mobile. Once again, make sure to do this. And I'm then going to open up the accessories. Okay, I think this collection page does look good. Let's view this peso cap, for example. And this is how the product page by default is going to look like. So we can then actually view this right here. We can also select the product media. We can change the type. So we could, for example, change this to carousel. And now this is basically, um, basically this is only important for the desktop. So if you would have carousel, this is also going to show up uh, as a one picture right here on the desktop. I would recommend you to leave this on. I think carousel does actually look better than the default grid, or grid option right here. Uh, as for the icons, uh, we can then actually change this as well. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that. We can then change the media aspect ratio. So we can change this to a square right here. And we can then basically um, use this. In my case, I'm going to actually change this back to uh, auto so that this is basically going to adapt. So that this is basically going to adapt to the image. Now we can then also change the, uh, basically the product description. We can change the policies right here. So these can work really good to actually kind of display certain unique selling points for your product. So in my case, we can say we can add another policy right here. So I'm just going to copy the uh, policy right here, duplicate, and I'm then going to change this to one of, or let's change this, one of a kind fitting. Okay, something like this. And we can then also change the icon. And so make sure to select it on the left. And we can then change this to, yeah, whatever we want. Let's just change this to washing for now. However, of course, we can also upload our own image icons, uh, which I would recommend you to do. Now, when actually now looking at the general product page, right here, we also have a you may also like section. However, if you would want to then actually add other sections onto the product page, besides the product information right here, we could do that by basically going over the same procedure as beforehand. We can use some of the pre-made sections right here, or we could also just build up our own custom section with it. So overall, I think this product page by default does actually look really good. One thing which I don't like is that the logo right here is so small. So I'm going to select this block right here and I'm going to change the height. Let's see. Okay, this is too big. Yeah, something like 
like this looks way better and looks way cleaner. Uh, of course, we can then also change the header. We can then actually also change the menu, but we already went over that. Now, if you would want to create a fully customized product page with even better conversion rates, I've actually previously made a complete guide on how to do exactly that. You can find it on screen right now, and I would highly recommend you to watch it if you actually want to have the best product page with the best conversion rate. Either way, I hope this video was helpful. I will see you in the next one.